Alrighty, we should be back. So just let me do a little check over real quick and then we'll start our set. Alright, I'll get some uh, music on. Let's see here. Free synth. Let's get some of that on. Just let me know if the music competes with my voice a little bit too much. Whatever. Oh, all, all right. Uh, real quick. Uh, so what we're doing is we're doing continuity from last time. Like, this is... This little handout right here that I previously posted in the Discord from last time um, is what you should be doing to warm up. Uh, we'll be doing the Glenn Vilpu approach, basically. Here, let me re-upload it to the chat. Let me re-upload it to Discord real fast and maybe put it on screen in the upper corner here. So this little guideline here, upload it to chat, and now I'll put it on screen in the discord up in the upper right corner of the screen here there we go so we're going to be using the glenn bilpu method again uh give me a second might be a little bit of noise from the outside but i just need to get some cross breeze in here All right, so we're going to start a 20 minute warm ups, 25 minute warm up set. And so they will, we will be actually be 24 minutes. Well, not 25 because we'll give a little leeway in case we skip some, one of the repeat drawings or something. So, okay, Google, set timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, and that's starting now. Thank Speaking you. of timers, to make sure. Okay, Google, working. shut up. Jesus. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Okay, it's canceled. <laughs> okay, okay, Google set timer for 25 minutes. Jesus Christ. I hate you. Okay, Google set timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. Jesus. Here, there we go. Now we got it properly formatted. So what we're doing right now is uh, there's that little guide up in the upper right, which is based on uh, the Glenn Vilpu approach to gesture drawing uh, from the Glenn Vilpu gesture draw uh, Glenn Vilpu drawing manual, which I do. If you're going to be uh, coming to these uh, sessions in the future, I recommend, strongly recommend picking up a copy of that, preferably a physical copy. But we'll be reading actually over some of the text of it uh, before our next session, and I'll be able to show some on-screen examples of uh, of the stuff from the book. There's some other things we're also going to be looking at today too. That more of that Flooby Newby Flooby um, Newby uh, collection of tips on uh, draftsmanship for storyboard artists and stuff draftsmanship and gesture drawing for storyboard artists. So this is like storyboard artist stuff, but this is also for this also applies for animators and illustrators and stuff too. This is this is very very animator oriented the approach that we're taking today though. Cause it's like very kind of about gesture and expressiveness and kind of like going with the flow you know, trying to convey weight and motion action without getting too caught up in detail we're not trying to do everything at once right now we picked an area that we're going to be concentrating on it so that's we're going to be repeating doing that we might do some little tangent variations to build on what we're trying to do but the reason why we have a little model like that figure up in the upper right is to give us something to focus on recenter to 
Because you, if you get like a figure like that, second nature, you can use it as a, like an intuitive starting point puppet, for just about any figure that you want to do. So if you're kind of new to figure drawing, I would actually, um, uh, and you, or if you're coming in here like really, really rusty, you might not want to draw the figure right away. You might want to do some line drills or something before you jump right into the figure. So make sure when you're drawing, do not be drawn from your wrist or your elbow. And don't lean your elbow up on anything. You want as much range of motion for your arm as possible, and you want to draw from your shoulder. Because you want your hand to you want your hand to remain steady and be driven by your shoulder. You don't want to put you want to have also have a light touch, and you don't want to put very much pressure on your wrist. These twos are going a little bit slow for me. So I may change them to ones after this one. I hope no one kills me for that. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll, sh I'll change it to ones and then like let me know if it's going too fast for people. Because this is like, you know, warm-ups. But like I'm feeling pretty confident my right now about just going right into ones. So, go. One. There. Skip that one. I don't want to do that one. Or that one. There we go. So for the ones, you have to make decisions quickly. Compared to twos. We might go back to twos, too, during this little kind of warm-up session. Also, don't be afraid to make mistakes and stuff. Like... That's the only way that you're going to improve, and also the only way you're going to get to warm up. If you give yourself permission to mess up, that's fine. What you should be trying to go for with these is to like look for a way to convey the action with the these kind of like bendy, forceful wires that you're sort of making using the sketch. Like, you're trying to convey, like, the, you're not really conveying much of the structure of the body. The closest thing to the structure that's in this is the, uh, the globe of the head that you start with, indicate direction with. The rest of it is just, um, the rest of it is just, like, purely gesture. And gesture is, like, at its core, like, it's basically like the, the underlying energy and the action and the attitude of that drives a pose. So it's everything from like gravity acting against the pose. It's to the forces of inertia to the um, the body language to the acting, the attitude, physical and the um, the physical and the story. Like you're trying to make a statement with with these, basically. I think I drew these a little large. I'm gonna shrink that. And draw. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer so I can get better. I'll get like close to 100 percent say. So you, the way this procedure works is you start with a sphere, you create another, you create an ellipse inside of it to show the direction that the thing is tilted, and a little dot for the top, it's like we're looking we're looking through x-ray vision to see that top of the plane of the head because this head is tilted back a bit. Create a little C curve for the neck. You use about like usually around like three lines here for like the torso. And uh, also like the, the tilt of the top and the bottom of the torso. Then you uh, create the legs using gesture lines. legs and limbs, 
stuff. And that's the procedure. You can also uh, violate the procedure slightly if like you see a really like important line of action that you have to draw like straight down from the head to that thing and stuff. But generally speaking, like uh, the procedure, you should be trying to follow, the, or, or at least you have the procedure to fall back on if you start feeling yourself like you're wandering. Generally, those three lines, by the way, is uh, one of like it's for the sides of the torso and the um, the center line of the torso. What's cool about this method is it's like because it's so simple and you can kind of like push. You don't have to worry about like making a good drawing. You're trying to get like the energy in there. I drew way too big on that one, I think. Like, you're trying to get the oomph that would go into the, that would, like, drive the better drawn structure that you'd come in with later. Like, don't get caught up in making a good structured drawing with these. That's not the point of this exercise. It's also on this exercise, it's okay to be messy. You're not making manicured lines and stuff. It's okay to go over your lines. It's okay to be scribbly and scratchy and have fun with it. Like, well, not, you don't want to like chicken scratch and stuff. You want like, you want lines that you can like mess around and play with and stuff. Like you're trying to capture like the feeling of the underlying force of something. You can't. Like, uh, you're, you can't be precious with what you're doing. And I'll show some examples of what I'm talking about and why we're doing what we're doing uh, after the break. You inherently can't get everything in during one of these, especially not for like a one minute pose. Try to get like as much as you're able to. You want to be thinking in terms of the underlying forces of what you're drawing. Like, think of this figure as, like, being composed of energy instead of being composed of physical matter. What is it doing? Like, if you're able to remove the physical object from here and just have, like, the inert a representation of the inertial force here, how would that feel? And that's what you're going for. Like, I presume this guy is swinging his leg around here. I think he's swinging it around that way. 
Because usually the usually that move in skating, uh, they they swing heel first. Here's a vignette. It's not he's not really doing much, but he actually is because he's got posture that can be played with and exaggerated. And there's no there's no pose that's too plain that can't be inter reinterpreted into something exaggerated. The effect that you want to have is like you, when you zoom out, you want to be able to tell at a glance uh, what the figure is doing. When you zoom out, out or step back from your paper, if you're doing this traditionally. If you're doing this traditionally, by the way, I strongly recommend using a Sharpie pen and on use it as cheap, do it on as cheap paper as possible. It forces you to kind of commit to what the lines that you're putting down and also to like sculpt into them more. And also it's inexpensive. Literally like a Sharpie and some cheap paper. Preferably a larger pad so you can move your arm more, but um, just a regular Sharpie pen. 99 cent store Sharpie pen or whatever. Yeah, I'm using ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen works also. Honestly, like anything works, uh, but Sharpie is especially useful for the, for this exercise. Like, in fact, like the pen I'm using right now is is one that um, I have it zoomed out to a certain ratio where it kind of feels like I'm using a Sharpie, and that's on purpose. So I can feel myself starting to get maybe a little sloppy with these. So I'm probably going to change them to twos. Well, uh, okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus nine minutes and 54 seconds. Sounds good. We'll change it to twos for the remain for the remainder of these. So now that we've kind of loosened up, um, we can get more control over what we're doing and make wiser decisions. And then we can just, and if we find ourselves stiffening up, then we can loosen up again like we did with our warm ups. But I mean, part of the point of doing warm ups is to get like the hand of the blood flowing. You're not going to be getting like great, amazing drawings out of the gate, especially for warm ups. And you shouldn't be trying to aim to get great drawings out of a session like this. That's not the point of this exercise. This, the, the point is to start to kind of read and understand these things that you're drawing. And to be able to exercise your ability to convey movement, action, form, well, no, not form, movement, action, um, physicality, a little bit of story here and there, but the underlying forces that are driving the pose. in there. Ribcage circle there. Draw a little large, so maybe I'll shrink that and draw and zoom in a good good ways more. Oh, 
start again. So the moment you start getting too precious with your drawings, um, that's the moment the drawing dies. Uh, you want to get this step right or get like uh, an understanding of this step right so that it can fuel everything else you do. Like more experienced people are able to like kind of embed a lot of what we're doing here into like the structure forms they do. But then there's a lot of times that they'll like kind of do drawovers over their own work. You'll see a lot of animators in particular who like do tracing paper drawovers pushing the shapes of a character design or a pose that they're trying to really push. Like there's a lot of stuff about like cleanliness and like clean looks and stuff that you see, especially like anime-ish productions, that is probably not what you want to go for because like a lot of that is very rooted in kind of like very clean manga artist aesthetic. Whereas you need you in order to get convey really good motion, really like visceral motion and action, you need a kind of a really loose approach. Eventually, over time, you can get more confidence and like build in a lot of this stuff into uh, into your figures. Like, there's more experienced people that can like take like a um, a mask of a face or something and use that as like a directional cue for the gesture that they play off of and stuff. But we're doing like the dirty, the dirty dumb. Not really dumb, but the uh, the dirty, visceral, dive your feet in approach, basically. Which even the more experienced people will do from time to time to to, to like uh, to like recenter themselves. Like especially if they find themselves stiffening up and they don't want things to stiffen up. Well, I've heard, I've often heard like the refrain like, uh, oh, my art teacher says you shouldn't practice anime or manga. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of misunderstanding for why they say that, both by the teachers that in some cases that are saying it, and both by the students. Um, there's like, there is such thing as a lot of closed-minded teachers, and stuff that are, uh, that are like telling their students to do, to not practice like anime or manga style or whatever because there's not any work for them that's of course changing these days uh, but um, but one of the main reasons they tell kids to do not do that is because they get caught up in style and also um, a lot like I said like a lot of like anime and manga product and man manga productions tend to have like very, very clean looking, deceptively clean looking character designs and stuff that can't, that if people get kind of get too far into them too early, they'll miss out on being able to like push the gesture of stuff. That's not always the case though. Like there's a lot of, there's a tremendous amount of anime and manga that I could push to, that I could point to easily that's like has excellent examples of, of like, like really visceral posing and gestures and stuff, but there's a lot of like run of the mill productions that have very very stiff, stiff looks to them. Like the kind of assembly line anime stuff. Where and then you know in the the mediocre stuff that all looks that all looks the same and the animation isn't too remarkable, that kind of stuff. But they always bring in like the the like people who understand like that underlying gesture stuff to do the really awesome like sakuga animation and <laughs> you you will often see them break these like incredibly stiff character designs in order to get that to get that look and feel
and some of them like just break the character designs over their knee. <laughs> some of them are just like really extreme in how like they uh, they play with just like uh, that one infamous Naruto fight uh, that everyone kind of th that everyone is kind of like very polarized on. They either say it's really bad animation or really good animation. I think it's extremely good animation. It's a little kind of off-putting because of how weird it looks. Um, so like tonally, it doesn't really feel like it fits the the show, but it looks but it's great, and it's a great example of like just how crazy gesture stuff can get. I'm just doing a little detour here to do a quick little kind of figure figure uh, posing thing with the head. gonna see about getting a little bit more head direction type stuff in tonight if I can. Okay Google how much time left on timer? One minute and twenty six seconds remaining. Okay well I guess this will be the last pose. I'll just pause it on this guy. I don't really feel like drawing him too much but I do want to kind of loosen up a bit. So after this, uh, we'll be going on a little five minute break, but then we'll be feeding our heads with um, the info on what we're going to be trying to learn a little bit tonight. Also, wish me luck. I just submitted my resume and uh, reel for to Warner Brothers Animation. So they're looking for 2D animators right now. So we see how that goes. Good luck. Really, really yeah, wish thank you. you. That you get I have job. a lot of friends that have been doing work for them, and I see their I see their the quality of their work shoot up after working for them. They apparently have a really great kind of an in-house training thing. No idea what I'd be working on as of yet. Alexa, stop! But I presume Alexa, but I presume it'd probably be Animaniacs or something. Kind of warming up with the puppet a bit more. Yeah, I, sometimes I'll do little figure invention detours on these. Like, if I feel my eye kind of glazing over to what I'm drawing, it's, that's usually a sign to kind of detour and, like, try doing something out of your head for a little bit. Just to mix it up. But anyway, uh, we're going to... Alexa... Okay, Google, set timer for five minutes. Five minutes. Starting. Five minutes. Starting now. Uh, Alexa, stop timer. Five-minute timer cancelled. I just accidentally got Alexa and Google to compete with each other for timers. So it's going to be a little bit of traffic noise behind me. Because uh, I opened a window, it's really roasting hot in this
Alrighty. Also, uh, feel free to post in chat um, whatever you've done for the warm ups and stuff. Let me stretch out a bit. I need to stretch. I need to get my brain juice going for this session. Mm. Standing up and rolling my arms around. I'm just going to try to get my heart rate up, get the blood going to my head. Right. Shaking out. Hmm. I gotta do that more often. It's like that kind of shaking out stuff. It's like kickstarting a car or an engine or whatever. Yeah, some people are already posting some stuff in chat. Warm ups in. Uh, I see Zob's doing some awesome warm ups. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, the Zav's not really doing what, uh, what, like, what the exercise is, but that's okay because Zav's pretty far along with their intuitive understanding of figure and stuff. Um, yeah, these are nice. They're a little small, and uh, I think that might cause you to stiffen up a little bit on some of them. But these are, I can, uh, but like, uh, like. Try to find like whatever is the ratio to get you like the right amount of like freedom to be dexterous with making these, basically. So you don't so it's like a so the whole thing feels like it has more of a flow to it. Or if you get something that doesn't really feel too flowy on it, you can go back over it again and improve it. Uh, I do see some good gesture in in here, but this is kind of. These are kind of hard to read into. Yeah, there's a lot going on there, but I mean, it's a warm up page, so it's not a big deal. I'm for like, like, I do see like trying to, trying to handle the gesture and trying to handle the flow and stuff. That's that's good. Yeah, same note as that other one. Uh, I'd say try to use longer strokes. Try to like find what whatever is the good ratio for. You. Also, like don't draw the outside. We'll go over this in a bit, but don't draw the outside of the figure um like that like you want to be drawing the interior basically like the interior forces is what you're doing what you're doing this one i would say uh more confidence like uh I, I think these are going in the right direction but i would say like try to make more confident longer strokes i do see a little bit of chicken scratchy stuff it's a little hard to stop. okay google stop a little hard to see. oh here we go yeah these are these are a bit chicken scratchy, but it's not the worst chicken scratchy. It's like a, it's just like building confidence, basically. Just keep trying to push yourself to pull longer strokes and stuff. Um, remember what you're what you're looking for is productive scribbles uh, that like like that convey like the force of the action and have like feeling behind them, basically. Let me see if I can find some stuff from Saturday class that shows might show off some of that. Oh yeah, like these. Like I have to build my own confidence up. Like that's the target that I'm heading for. But uh but like but this is like kind of what I'm talking about with um, productive scribbling, basically, where there's feeling behind what you're trying to do, and it like it, it you, you can pretty much read what the pose is doing when you zoom out. Right here, let me create a new folder here. Oh, another thing that I've started doing is signing. So, it's dead. Ones, 
Great handwriting. Sign and date at 111 20 21. There we go. Just keep it all organized. It's like some warm up doodles that I was doing before class. I just, I, 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 this is the only drawing that I did today so far. Like I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to ease myself back. Like last week was warm up week, so this week I'm gonna have to step things up and do more, um, do more drawing to get back into things and stuff. Because I got personal projects I gotta warm myself up for. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's take a few more peeks at some other people's stuff before we'll go into. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, this is a little bit chicken scratchy, but I do see some of the productive scribbling going on here. Like there is a feeling that you thought through this. Like I feel like a kind of a almost a, a, almost like a three D thread line through that, and there's a little bit of that going on with this torso here, too. And there's some some happening there. Like it's good. It, like there's. Still some like exterior kind of lack of confidence stuff going on here, but like the, there, I think the underlying thrust is present. Just keep trying to keep aim, for, keep trying to aim for that. Let's say like you're you're going for you're going for making those forces read and read well. Like the posing and the attitude of this figure. Like when you when you throw out of your head the notion that you have to make a good drawing, you can just focus on conveying the force of it. It becomes very very liberating. Like the force and the um, the attitude and posing and stuff, then it just becomes about like that, like scribbling in that, like without worrying about like making someone's jawline look right or get their proportions right. Like 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 a uh, you you're using a very simple puppet to convey, um, to like that that you can like really screw around with and play play with forcefully and really get into. Like you should sometimes been doing this be working up a sweat. Yeah, this one I would say like more productive scribbling. These are really simple and clean and stuff, but I think you can push more thrust into them and stuff. Like, um, let's see. Yeah, they are a bit chicken scratchy, but I see you wrestling with kind of the right stuff. Like, there is some, so, there is like some kind of an attempt to like find the thread line of force through the figure and so on. Like, even on this. Like, I can see it there. This is not too terribly out of the ballpark for, like, a script the, like, doing 30-second gesture drawings. Uh, the 30-second gesture drawing exercise. In fact, I should show a clip from that. Let's see. Hopefully I don't get copyright blanked for showing Tonico's uh, video. But uh, here's something that I was playing before class at the Discord. Uh, Tonico Pantoja, a friend of the Discord and a friend of um, the class. Uh, he's got, like, a really good... You got a really good few videos on whoops on um on like uh sim like simple figure drawing uh like simplified figure drawing for animators and storyboard artists. But yeah, you see this right here. This is like a thirty second. These are like thirty second drawings that he did. So you, uh, you should definitely watch Tonico's videos on uh, on drawing the figure with tech. With Figure fast technique for animation and stuff. Because you can see these really scribbly figures. He's doing really quick and stuff. Like, um, those are like thirty seconds and stuff. Thirty seconds to one minute poses. So it's okay to be kind of scribbly and hairy like that to an extent. But you do want to kind of get. You want to aim for like the, the thrust of the drawing and the attitude and the posture and whatever. You want to use as like as dirty tools as possible to get the overall push of what you're trying to convey with the pose. Yeah, anyway, uh, so uh, let's take a look at some of the other study materials that... Whoops. Let's get that off screen. Alright, so uh, this is this is the Fluby Newbie storyboarding. Um, storyboarding guide it includes a lot of stuff on like draftsmanship and uh, draftsmanship for animators and storyboard artists in it too um 
I've linked that in Twitch chat and I've linked that I'm linking that in the drawing corner chat and in my personal discord now. So you can refer to this and there's a lot of great, uh, these are a bunch of the images from it. <laughs> that's, that's cool. But yeah, let's check this out. This is, see this guy here? This guy's obeying the rules of perspective and stuff and there's like timing and so on to it. Um, which means in the, uh, there's a lot like a good sense of like dimensionality to it, even though it's like really, really crude. This is what we're shooting for. Like the, this thing that we're working on right here is this. We use this to work out, um, to plan our animation or to plan our comic panels or illustrations and stuff. Like we, but we want something that has like, even in like a really crude state like this, a good sense of feeling to it. Like, um, like we can tell what this, what this pose is doing for the most part. Um, when it's going through these actions and stuff. Yeah. Uh, here's an image actually from Tonico here. Create a shorthand for your character. Yeah, he's talking about like a uh, character specific stuff for your storyboards. Like you have a shorthand for your anime, for your animation or your, for your storyboards. Like you, um, you don't do this like, extra added detail on like a pass in the animation until later when you're trying to get like the initial posing and stuff or like early on, you'd go, maybe even go cruder than this, but this is like shorthand that helps you work out what the character is doing before you commit to a drawing, uh, to like fully detailed drawing. more stuff on 3d space so we're going to be going more into this stuff on next friday and saturday but this is to give you a little taste of some of the kinds of stuff that we'll be dipping more into head framing <laughs> something i might actually do this uh, normally monday is my my head drawing class day um uh i'm thinking of Possibly doing something along these lines for like next Monday or something where we do like a head framing exercise, basically. Also, if someone's talking, you're really, really quiet. I might have to boost the sport. I'm actually like, I'm trying to avoid like overusing my headphones lately. So I'm not, I don't have headphones on. And the only audio I pick up is the headphones that are sitting right near me that I can that are turned all the way up so I can hear them even though they're off my head so if you're talking on discord and I don't hear you uh, uh apologies I'm trying to I'm trying to save my ears from from going deaf from without from headphone overuse I'll figure out some better solution for that in the future like I want to get like the third the GTX 3080 uh or 3070 or something in the future because it has like an AI noise filtering thing so then I can go purely headphone free well with like PC speakers on anyway so so the stuff kind of stuff we're mainly looking at for tonight is stuff like this there's like lots of great tips on this page this is from a Grism norm guide on like um, like animator animator figure drawing basically and there's little tips tips and tip, tidbits and pieces here to read on your own time um stuff about line of action and that, that's another th reason why we're doing this like um to make the line of action squidward is like closer to being a human figure than spongebob is and closer to this this these characters that we're drawing right here so this is a good example of like how line of action works not something to keep in mind when you're doing your posing tonight. Um, let's see here. About that, over that. Another great example right here. This is a short-handed figure with short-handed freehand perspective backdrop for a storyboard panel sequence. It's a bunch of line of action figures and stuff. Line of action driven figures. This, I think this person started with these with these line of actions and then and like created the um, the draw the black line drawing over it. Here's a really really great page from uh Grism Norm. Lots and lots of great tips to go over on your own time and stuff. Like pushing the pose, we we wanna often go beyond what we're seeing 
and, and like that. So pushing and exaggerating uh, what the pose is doing is something for you is something for you to look out for. Um, line of action, of course. Line of action being the general overall sweeping thrust of the thing. Uh, clear silhouette, like. Uh, does like overlapping limbs and stuff make the pose unclear? Uh, like if you filled the pose in blank, would it uh, would it read or would it not? Um, no straight lines. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna say that like for tonight, probably yeah, we're not gonna use too many straights. Like it's mostly gonna be flowing gesture, but I'm not gonna say no straight lines. There's gonna, there's gonna be sometimes when you use straight lines. But straight lines are usually used for um, creating structure, and we're mainly focused on gesture. Uh, let's see here. Head construction. We can put. A, we we can use a little bit of this. Might use a little bit of that tonight. More acting, less anatomy. Yeah. This is very figure. Fig, this is very animator oriented. Figure drawing studies here. Head framing guide again. Let's go through these some more. Body shapes, three steps. Uh, quick, uh, the three steps, the most abbreviated pre overview of my character drawing posing process. One quick bold gesture, movement, and acting, silhouette, weight, and earth, weight, and earth, weight, transition, add, adding cast shadow early to ground, early to ground character, clear silhouettes through big shapes, angle pelvis, shoulders, head. Volumes, yes. Body shapes. Repeating a similar shape with the main body shape is a way to unify basic character design. But anyway, um, let me just shift through these. So here's a here's a big point right here. Don't focus on the outer lines of, of your drawing. You want to. Don't be afraid to be messy with the drawing. The sketch is only the first step. Work loose, make mistakes, show confidence, push the character, push the pose. Think of the sketch as blueprints for your drawing. Your first attempt is never the last. Like, keep push, keep like trying to push poses and keep trying to um, get more more force and feeling out of them. In the future, by the way, uh, what we're going to be doing for some of these is like, if we do stuff like this. Well, we might take like a couple of the poses that we've done previously and then try pushing them and designing a character or a scene around them or something. Like this is like the raw fodder of something you would like start a, um, a piece of animation or something like pre in previous class stuff in here. I've done like I've done like animation demos where I took where I took like a pose from one of these uh, from one of these like figure drawing pose sessions. And then I designed an animate an animation around that pose. Um, yeah, we'll be doing stuff like that in the future. Again, too. Shift contrast. Let me find. Let me just shift through here. So here's the main thing I want people to look over here, and this is something. This is a very important section of this sheet, this giant sheet that I'm going to link that I want people to pay attention to. And uh, by the way, we're we're gonna well, we're gonna be going over this for about another ten, like five or ten, ten minutes or so, and we'll take a short break, and then we'll get then we'll do three more pose sessions of uh, time figure poses. That'll be the plan for tonight. So, uh, focus points of practice. These uh, these are in order from highest to lowest portfolio. But we we've gone over this sheet before, but this is like. This is a sample of like how to partition how you practice. Like, try not to do everything at once. Like, eventually you're going to be like making the balancing act between all these things. But when you are practicing and trying to get better at something, uh, you want to pick an area to focus on. Tonight we are focused on. Uh, we are focused on gesture drawing. And that is. Not really explicitly called out here, uh, like it, uh, but this that but that, that honestly should be one of the things here. Like I, if I was going to put it in here somewhere, it would probably be somewhere in the general practice gesture drawing. I, yeah, I think poses, probably poses. I want to say, except like except like maybe down below body parts. I would say it's 
I would say it's down below body parts. Like if we could put like a 5.5 gesture drawing would be there. Gesture drawing, of course, uh, combines a little bit of body language to it as well. But uh, but yeah, like for our purposes, uh, gesture drawing would be like at the 5.5 thing. Previously, we have looked at and uh, done studies from this thing from Kevin Chen, which is a proportion guide. Uh, it's a general propor proportion guide to the figure, and you can use other kind of proportion guides and stuff similar to this. But uh, you want something like this that's going to get you in the ballpark and like that will something to have in the back of your head when you're doing these gesture drawings. You're not going to be concentrating on getting perfect gestures during like when you're doing gesture drawing. But having the idea of a proportion figure in the back of your head to uh, influence what you're doing for these is handy. Like because then you'll do little things like, oh, uh, I can kind of guesstimate the elbow is going to be about like near the bottom of the rib cage, somewhere around there, or um, like uh, the top half of the body from the pit of the crotch to the top of the head is roughly about equidistant to the pit of the crotch to the bottom of the feet or something. Stuff like that. And, uh, but, like, when you're concentrating on something, you want to give, you want to give it your all at that thing. Like, it's the same thing when you actually are working on something. If you're doing thumbnailing for your animation, you want to make, you want to be, you want to, like, give it your all at thumbnailing. If you are doing rough animation, uh, you want to give it your all at doing rough animation. If you are doing live action research for your animation you want to give it your all at live action research if you are doing tie downs for your animation you want to give it your all at tie downs if you're doing cleanup want cleanup lines on your animation you want to give it your all on clean on line art and cleanup if you're doing coloring and compositing or shadowing or whatever you want to give it your all at that phase like and it's the same thing if you're doing like perspective backgrounds or something like that if you're doing storyboards you want to learn how to partition what you're doing so you can focus and give it your all at that phase. And then you have that thing that you work off of that you are no longer concentrated on because you've done the work for that phase. Um, and you're, you're doing the next step for the problem solving to do whatever it is you're, you're trying to do, whether it be animation or illustration or comic page or something like for example, like if I'm working, uh, like, well, let's pretend I'm trying to plan out an animation right here. Like I'd be using like puppet, I'd be using like quick thumbnail puppets like this. Maybe draw like even smaller stuff, like super quick thumbnail puppets and stuff. And uh, that would be like what I'd use to just like bang, 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 get like a story idea out as quickly as possible. Like, I don't care about how it's well drawn and stuff. But then I go in again and I do like tie it down with more thought out dimensional drawing and stuff. And I give it my all on that. And then like clean it up and so on and so on. I mean the point is is like uh you you want to partition what your your studies and you want to partition um what you want to partition like this is this is a technique not just for you studying and practicing this is a this is an approach also for how you approach projects you're working on uh and you like and and of course you can come up with your own prioritizing um rules here especially like if you're an animator for example there might be certain things specific to animation that might get slotted in here um but yeah, the uh, I mean the point is we are partitioning what we're doing, and so with that in mind, this is what we're partitioning to do today. This is this thing here. This very very simple character puppet right here. That is from Glenn Vilpu's gesture, uh, Glenn Vilpu's um, drawing manual. See if I can find some good examples of it. But here it is, right here. 
Uh, I would get a cop get a physical copy of Len Filpu's drawing manual. If you can. Where he describes how to how to use this technique. And we might get lucky and have a let's see, a Dumbo Food drawing manual. Let's see if there's like some images from it in here. That might show off the technique a bit. But basically, um, oh, here, here's, here's a couple pages showing it off right here. But yeah, uh, but basically, like, uh, the technique is you start with a sphere. You make an ellipse in the sphere and create, like, a dot for, like, the top. Like, wherever, like, the top of the head is. The, the ellipse inside the sphere is tilted to the axis of the head. I like to add a center line, but you don't need it. Um... The point is to establish the tilt of the head, and then you then you get like a little C curve kind of thing for the whatever the tilt of the neck is. You get about like three lines kind of three lines kind of going down the, um, the describing the figure, roughly about like that. Like, and then they can be very loose, kind of like what he has. He and he has like you you should you can look at videos of how Glenn Bilkew draws. Uh, it's very very accessible and uh, very, very beginner-friendly. Um, you establish the tilt of the shoulders and the tilt of the waist and um, the tilt of the hips. And the next phase, you do the legs. You get like, kind of like simple feet so you can plant them on the ground or whatever, have them whatever they're doing. And you, then you usually do the arms last. Of course, you can jump around in order of these steps a little bit, and you can also do things like you have a line of action that really kind of drives the whole thing from top to bottom or stuff like that if you really want to do that. But this is the point is this is a technique that you can keep coming back to if you start wandering too much during the session. And mastering this will give you a very solid puppet that you can use for just about anything, really, as like a little as any kind of scene or th thing you want to do. This is a this is a shorthand puppet that you can use us for animation. Um, let's see, uh, Tonico, uh, Tonico Pantoja has a bunch of stuff on different techniques and approaches to um, figure drawing for animators and storyboard artists. And uh, let's see here, I'm showing style drawing figures fast for technique. Yeah, there's a few of them. In, there's like a one there's like one video in particular for like this this version of the puppet specifically is one of the many different shorthand puppets that you use for uh, animation like let's see he has a shorter video let's see. but yeah um you can look at those yourself later i strongly recommend doing that but in any case uh like i said uh get the gulenville food drawing manual I think you can find it on his site. Like, uh, the Amazon one seems to be, like, overpriced used or something. I don't think... It is not supposed to be, like, 70 bucks. Good lord, that's... that's. Uh, I don't think that that's... Um, yeah, this is, like, $70 used. I don't think it's out of print right now. I think you should be able to find, like, new copies of it for reasonable prices. But in any case, however you're able to... Um, However, however you're able to get it, get a hold of it, because we will be using that, using this drawing manual in the coming weeks here, pretty extensively. So, uh, with that in mind, we are um, going to, I'm going to get like a little quick water break, but then we're going to do like a 20 or 25 minute pose session. We're going to do three more time pose sessions, uh, about like 20 to 25 minutes each, uh, for the uh, for the remainder of the session. Um, I don't have homework for these classes, but I'm going to suggest that people continue doing this stuff. Uh, I'm actually thinking of not having a Twitch meetup tomorrow, but I'm thinking of tomorrow, same time, 5.30. Uh, we meet up in the drawing corner in here tomorrow at 5.30, and then we just do a time, we just do like time figure posing session. And like, a lot of people are kind of shy to talk on my Twitch um, for the classes and stuff. So I kind of want to encourage people when they're when they come to my Discord to um, to talk more and to talk about what they're struggling with and talk with each other. 
and give each other feedback and stuff. So um, next, uh, so tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m., let's let's meet up again in here. Uh, we will not be streaming to Twitch. We'll just be meeting here and uh, continuing our practice together. So, uh, I'm going to get some water real quick, and then we will get back to, um, to figure photos dry. Let's put it on, I want to say, twos. Let's pause it on that lady. You can get started on her if you like. Maybe take a few cracks at her while I uh, get some water for back. Alrighty, and we're back. Um, sorry about the traffic. I, did, this I, I wanted to ask you if you, if you can OBS, copy. But... Uh, What's up? I don't know if you can hear me. I don't think so. <laughs> Your what? Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you if uh, how do you feel if we like share copyrighted ma material in your server, uh, don't do it because in my not... don't do it in my Discord. All right, all right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. So. Okay, Google, set timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. So we're officially starting on this lady now. So now that I've kind of shown you the technique that we're doing, um, let's walk, I'll just walk you guys through it a little bit. So you start with an oval like this, you, or, or kind of a egg, spheroid or whatever. You get like a little dot for the top of the head. Establish the tilt of the head a little bit with the little other lips here. I'm going to say that she's kind of up tilted towards us a little bit. But it doesn't have to be that perfect. Next up, get a little C curve for the neck. And there's three lines that you're going to be concentrating on for the body, they should be following a gestural flow of like the kind of posture of the body. Like they're following the, like you're not, remember you're not copying the drawing here, you're interpreting the forces that are at play here. Like the shift of the weight that's happening in our hips. Generally speaking, there should be like a center line, line in the middle of that. Basically, you're not really, even though these are on the exteriors of the body, you're not really drawing the exterior of the form of the figure. You're trying to go for kind of internal energies of the figure, of like the internal energies of the pose. And the forces that work with it. Pay close attention to the counterposing 
of the tilt of the hips versus the tilt of the shoulders. In this case, it looks kind of like her, her torso is tilting towards us over that way a little bit versus the hips that are kind of more facing us straight on. But anyway, now we have to move on to the next pose. So every pose is an opportunity to kind of observe and learn a few things from. Okay, so I'm actually adding a little bit of a chin to this head. I'm going to reel it back into the Vilpu method a little bit. C-curve neck. Remember, like, if you find yourself overcomplicating things, this is why it's handy to have Bil Glenn Vilpu's drawing manual. I'm actually going to open it up to the page that I need it at very shortly. Vilpu's drawing manual, having images of, like, how he shows how to do it for you. Uh, can help you kind of recenter yourself if you find yourself overcomplicating things or trying to take on too much, which is a habit that I have. Like that's not the point. Like the point where we got we got to focus at this phase right now. Like this is the phase that we're cho we're choosing to focus at. There will be other times when we focus more on structure or anatomy and stuff, but for today, we are focused on gesture and uh, specifically Bilpu's approach to gesture. And so with that in mind, it just becomes around it becomes about playing with that technique instead of trying to overdo things. So you have more you actually have, find it's more liberating and you get better results, better feeling when you have fewer things, fewer noise in your brain to uh, to compete with what you're trying to do when you're trying to convey a pose. I actually may switch it to ones after this next one. Did anyone have a problem with me switching to ones for the last for the warm-up session? It kind of seemed like from the warm from like the sheets that I saw everyone, everyone had a good had a pretty good time keeping up. I'm getting kind of like these interlocking sort of forms of the arms kind of going around instead of like trying to like draw the whole hand out, draw like uh draw like the whole hips out and stuff. No, no, we're not going for that. We're going for the underlying force of the pose and the tilt of the figure and stuff and like these kind of interconnecting abstract shapes that we're playing with in order to understand the forces at play here. Like instead of fully drawing out, like it, it, now that we've done this, like the next step would be to like lower opacity on it if we're doing like a full drawing stuff, and then like start working out like the more like using it as like a foundation to kind of riff off of for creating more like, more thought out figure posing stuff. I'm just doing like a quick example of, of like where you would go next with this. Might do a few more of these, but we're not really focused on this phase tonight. So I'll just leave that at that for now. But you, the, the point is, is that you, this is not, this is like your starting point. This is like, oh, we already did that guy. Let's just get him. Let's actually put it to ones again. There we go. So like, don't get caught up in trying to make a good drawing. You want to start vibing basically with the force of what's going on there. And having given yourself permission to play with play with it to convey the thrust of something that you want to get kind of get lost in 
that instead of trying to make a good quote unquote good drawing. You want to get lost into the feeling of the you want to get lost into the feeling of the pose itself. You're looking for things like this torso twist here. Like look at how that look at how the torso twists and opposes the hips there, for example. There's, even in like a fairly static looking pose like this, there's still opportunity to find the general thrust and the weight. Like this is a deceptively dynamic pose right here. If you know what to look for. this guy from uh, from Saturday had some fun with him what's uh, actually what's good about like these repeating poses is that becomes an opportunity to like turn them more into a character or push them more leave that at that. I kind of screwed myself over there by drawing that a little bit too large and a little bit too close to the other stuff. All right, let's get a little scribble in there, waiting for the next pose to come on. Get some arm action. Ooh, that's a really crazy dynamic pose. So remember, going for you're going for like the overall thrust and feeling. You're kind of trying to create like a lyrical poetry with your line. If that makes any sense, like you're you're not being literal to what the what to what's going on up there. You're interpreting the rhythms of it. And uh poetry does not follow how language normally works. It has a rhyme and a rhythm to it. You're looking for a, you're looking for whatever the rhyme and the rhythm is of the pose that you're looking at, basically. Things that play off each other and then like resonate against each other throughout the figure. So now I've gotten super scribbly, now it's time for me to bring it back in a little bit. And that's the benefit of having Bill Pugh's drawing manual open near me, so that I can just kind of glance over it as a cheat sheet to remind me, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. Because there's always a danger, like, when you're drawing these, of, like, you start copying what you're seeing. Or trying to, like, draw too much realism when you're trying to do a gesture drawing study. If you get caught up in that, then it starts to stiffen up gesture. Because the gesture is not about realism, it's about um, the truth of the pose. And you let that drive how you draw the anatomy and other and shapes and other things later. The other thing I'm going to actually suggest people, especially the newer people here, to try, and I'll show off a little bit more of it, is the continuous line exercise. Like, 
when you're doing these poses and stuff, you don't have to use them use a continuous line for the whole thing, but for parts of it. But or but you can use it for the whole thing. But um, using a continuous line where you don't pick your pencil pick your pencil off the paper and you kind of sculpt with it will help your will help you kind of start to understand those rhythms that I'm talking about. And it'll help you kind of wrap your head around sculpting the figure a little bit more. I can kind of encourage people to do that. Let's do that for the next few of these. Like, we're still using Glenn Vilpu's method, but let's try using like continuous lines. It's okay to kind of like scribble up a bit here and there. This is not unlike what we saw on Tonico Pantoja's 30 second pose videos. He was doing like little bits and pieces of the continuous line thing for sections of the drawing. It's like you're trying to feel stuff out, and it's okay to get a little bit of little bits of scribbly here and there when you're doing the continual line thing. Gonna kind of recenter things a little bit here. Oops. Do that. I'm using bits and pieces of the continuous line exercise in this too, and combining it with the filter. Let's get this guy. There we go, that's a good one. But I'm using the continuous line exercise to also kind of like feel out the line of action, feel out the rhythms of the form, and so, so on. And then when I've got my fill of doing this, I'll go back to purely Glenn. Which I think I will for the next one. Let's do a little few ellipse warm warm ups real quick. Now the thing about gesture drawing is it is going to drive the other stuff. Like, so you don't want to stay in gesture forever. At some point you're going to have to work the, work up shape and stuff beyond gesture and combine them. And we'll be working on that in the future too. But for now we get to concentrate on this. Try making little wiser decisions about this guy.
The guy looks like he's doing a Doc Savage imitation. Doc Savage was one of the pulp proto superheroes, by the way. It's nice to get kind of a straight on view here, figure like this to sort of recenter yourself to the technique a bit. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus six minutes and 38 seconds. Six more poses. I'm gonna really kind of vibe with the forces on this. Like, I'm gonna scribble like heck for this because I just really, really want to like feel it out. And then, oh, that looks like garbage. Well, using something like this, I can just go, uh, like, I've got like a good f sense of the feeling of it now. I can go back in like this. See, those scribbles are not garbage. They are you trying to vibe with what you're seeing. And you use that, use them as something to rip off of. Like giving yourself permission to scribble in this is what you want to go for or you to make productive scribbling like you what you should be doing you should be aiming for like a mix of trying to push yourself and go crazy with it and then like reeling yourself back in every now and then like i want people to work up a sweat doing this if they can Start like dancing your arm around and start working up that manual dexterity of your of drawing from your shoulder. That's why it's going to be very important to not to not draw from the wrist while doing this. You're going to severely fuck up your shoulder if you do that. Oh no no, you're going to severely fuck up your wrist or your elbow if you aren't drawing from your shoulder. Page of Wands, I'd say. Alexa, how Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? I couldn't find There's any enabled video space. Seconds remain. Go to the Alexa app to find and enable video space and devices. So if you get a pose that you've already drawn before, use that as an opportunity to see how you can push it and exaggerate. You're familiar with the rhythms having drawn it before, but now try, try to go beyond it a bit. Don't try to do an imitation of the last thing you do. Try to push it and try to invent with it. So 
you try to imitate the last thing you've done instead of going beyond it, it's going to stiffen you up. It's going to make you self-conscious and stuff. If you try to go beyond it, like this, and give yourself even permission to just play with it and go nuts, then you'll get something new out of it. So at the end of the day, like, the point of doing this is like to be able to learn how to riff off poses to create uh, to create stuff for your own work. It's an exercise just for, well, it's for exercise for drawing in general, but it's also an exercise for something that you're going to be using in like all your personal work. Being able to like take reference and play with it, basically. Get a get a get like a feeling from it that drives like whatever it is that you're going to be drawing. I think this is the last pose. Uh, okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's one minute and 28 seconds remaining. Cool. I think this should be the last pose then. We'll just pause it after this pose because it's close enough. So I'm going to go a little bit more cartooned with this puppet that I'm using for this dude. Because I've drawn him before. I think that's a good strategy, actually, because, like, I'm going to be really, like, inherently we're going to be seeing a lot of repeating images in these sessions. It would be a good idea if um, we tried to do something beyond, we'd, like, we tried to invent characters out of the figures that we're doing when we see them again and again. Okay, let's pause it on this guy. All right, so that was a full page of ones. So let's see, ones... Remember to sign and date your work. Okay, Google, stop. We'll go back to twos, I think, for the next set. Uh, okay, Google, set timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. So we have two more sessions of this, uh, of uh, 20 to 25 minutes. So sessions for the evening, and then we'll be done. So how's everyone feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like I'm getting good artwork out in. Like... Remember, like, this stuff is not garbage. Like, this stuff is, this stuff is, like, what you use as, like, your initial kind of working out the, the, working out the idea. Remember, uh, remember what it said on this. Like, your first drawing is not your last. Your sketch, your sketches are, are blueprints of your drawing. And, uh, don't focus on the other lines. And you give yourself permission to be messy. Like, look at these. These are, you see how messy these are? There's great thrust to them and stuff. And, uh, these are, like, very kind of animator figure drawing type stuff. Like, you're not always going to see, like, uh, sometimes for certain figure drawing exercises, you'll see very simple, quick lines, but you'll often see very scribbly stuff like this. Or, like, the stuff in the Tonico Pantoja video, uh, where he showed these very scribbly things. Like, look at that. But in this, like, uh, th this is like his warm-ups and stuff. He's given examples of this. So these aren't, like, quite as dynamic as they might be, probably. If he's like, But this is like, look at that. See, like, you get the shoulder tip, the hip, hip tilt, 
there's like little bits and pieces of like the the body and stuff in there uh, like these are like great for like getting like quick impressions of the figure and stuff animator figure drawing technique but yeah like check it out like here's the stick figure approach for for like uh, fast drawing techniques for animation this is not too out, out of the out of the realm of what we're doing right here um let's see the skeletal there's the stick figure approach skeletal approach shows some good examples of the uh, different versions of that the solid gesture Let's see if we can find a good example oh, yeah here's here it is but he's got some other videos that show up some really great short animator shorthand techniques for doing uh, figure drawing uh, for animation and storyboarding. Let's see if we can find. Approaching full figure animation shorthand. I think that was a. There's a, multiple videos that he did on the subject. So one of them was like really long, one of them was really short. Here we go. This is, I think this is one of the ones that he shows off some of the different approaches to um, figure animations here. So let me try. Oh yeah, this, this is, this is one of the videos that shows off the different approaches to this, like this, this shorthand right here is an example of like what we're doing right now. So this looks about as garbage as the figures that we're drawing look. Uh, but this is the way you're going to be drawing stuff when you're animating, because you're just concentrating on the motion. Like, pretty drawings come later. See? And that looks great. Like, that's fantastic. Like, that, because you, that, see, that's what happens when you, when you, that, that, that's the point of doing this. You're supposed to liber liberate yourself from having to make good drawings, so you can just concentrate on feeling and motion. And then when you're doing it fourth dimensionally, for animation, you have you have you have the ability to just like strip everything back, and not worry about making a good drawing, and you just do this. But of course, you are a draftsman, so you know where to go, like from with we, you know where to go next from this. Like you can like turn that into a good character. Yeah, here's uh, the classical Disney approach is actually the C one right here uh, that he shows here is closer to the Glenn Vilpu approach. That's pretty much what we're doing today, the C one, like uh, where it's kind of like a box body sort of thing with like, uh, glo like glo glo the um, spear face and the um, the simple limbs, simple stick figurey limbs. There's uh, some other techniques he shows in here, flower sacks and sausages. Uh, this video, by the way, is approaching fig full figure animation and finding your shorthand style. Tanika Panto just fit. Uh, Okay, Google, stop. But yeah, C is the one that we're we're practicing today, actually. Yeah, this is him pretty much using the technique that we're practicing right now, more or less. Like he's not really drawing a directional line on the head here, though, but uh, he doesn't really need to for this one, for this bit of animation that he's doing. Yeah, see, so he gives the other. Here's some just to show you some other examples before we get back to drawing, like. So the flower sack and sausages approach where you have like a flower sack for the body basically and then you have like you, you can think of the limbs being kind of volumetric sausages there's different reasons to use these different techniques and stuff quick quick and loose gesture like these are these are like quick and loose gesture is kind of a little bit of that continuous line exercise that I was talking about. There's little bits and pieces of like uh, quick impressions of bits of anatomy and stuff in, in these too. If you look at them, like you can see bits and pieces of like the deltoid on that, for example. You see bits and pieces of like the calf muscle and stuff. This is like really loose and quick impression stuff. It's like enough for you to like, it's a really, really kind of like super abstract way to approach it. And you, that one you give yourself a lot of permission and leeway to be really scribbly with it. So we are doing a little bit of that today too, uh, but we are mainly doing C here. And the building blocks one that one's 
building blocks one is definitely like if you're drawing stuff in perspective in like really severe perspective would be a technique that'd be a good time to use that i would say because you're tracking how stuff moves in 3d space a little bit more anatomy like so the, there's also like the simplified anatomy approach right here that he's showing off of uh, a shorthand for figures for animation let me see if See how his chart ends up at the end. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love his sketchbook. Look at that, like those extensive studies. Like, see the, see this stuff going on here. Like that's what we're going to be doing, um, in uh in in these sessions. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday we're going to be doing. Um, last Wednesday we did legs. Um, this next Wednesday we will probably do. Uh, legs some more. I would say. Legs, but connect them more with the torso, I would say, is what we're probably going to be doing. So we can find a lineup of all the figures that he, the different uh, approaches that he showed. Here it is. Yeah, here's all the different here's all the different approaches that he uh, that he demonstrated during this and talked about. This is a, there's different videos that he has on this. There's actually a few other techniques as, uh, like uh, aside from these that he showed here too. But these are like some of the main ones, some of the main shorthand approaches for figure drawing for animation and storyboarding. Uh, there's the star the star man method, which is actually very close to this. The, the star man is the star man story. Star man storyboard figure. <laughs> so we're gonna find it, but it's like a um, approach to um, drawing the figure that kind of looks like a star. It's very outline y kind of looking. It's like uh, something like. I'd love to find some. I, I wish I had some handy examples to show, but it's like this kind of. Oh, actually, no. There, there was an example of it. In um. The flooby newbie things that, that I had. Let me see, it was from that animatic. Here it is. You can see all the way back there. That's a example of a Starman figure, and it's basically like a version of the contour uh, technique for um, for simplified figures for uh, storyboarding. That's a, that, that's like there's a few different things. There's more than just like the Starman approach going on here, but like for the stuff at the beginning. That's definitely like very much like kind of the storyboard artist Starman shorthand, I would say. You'll see the, you'll see the Starman an awful lot, especially in action show storyboards and animatics. Anyway, so uh, we'll get back into this. We're going to do a twenty-minute session of twos, uh, twos and ones. We'll mix it up. So, with what in mind? With that in mind, what we saw with uh, Tonico. Oops. Second here. With that in mind of what we saw with Tonico, I'm gonna actually put like his little kind of guide thing on screen here. Just have that in the upper corner here. Uh, I'm gonna copy paste the the link to the video in chat if you want to watch it. If you want to. Not listen to my stupid ass and listen to someone who actually knows what he's talking about better than better than me. Uh, you can you can play Tonico's video while you're vibing in here. But we're gonna do another 20 minute session of uh, figures. So brace yourselves. We're gonna do these for twos now. So okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and that's starting now. All right. Oh, fucking hell. It's a little annoying. It's, it's like the bars and shit on the screen. Oh, 
that's just because it's paused, whatever. But yeah, I mean, keep that in mind. Like, we're basically doing, like, the Disney approach. Classical Disney approach right here to um, figure it out, which is basically just, like, Glenn Bilpoo's approach. The classical Disney approach to sim to like simplifying the figure for animating. So I want you to like, like I said, like I said that earlier on in this, like I want you to, I want you to not get too caught up or worried that you're not worried about making good drawings. Um, or that you will be able to make good drawings using this stuff. Because this stuff is for you to, and this stuff is putty for you to play with when you're working yourself up into doing more worked up drawings and stuff. Like if you get a good feeling going with this, this will like this will like drive the thrust of your figure drawing or your animation. Uh, but you are going to have to walk through the steps of doing like full drawings and stuff with structure and everything and so on so you know where this is, or animation for that matter so you know where this stuff is going so like uh, it's a little bit hard a little bit hard to kind of grasp what you're supposed to do with this if you haven't like if you haven't walked through using this to um to make figure draw I mean, to make like uh, characters or figure drawings or, or animation or comics or something you need to walk through it several times and um, like make characters out of these and stuff and uh, use these for use these as a basis for your illustrations or something so you have a better understanding of where this stuff is going so you're thinking several chess moves ahead uh, in some cases because just be, just by virtue of the fact that you walk through doing animation or characters using this stuff and because of that, then you can also like liberate yourself because you realize, oh, I can be really as messy as I want with this at this phase because that'll get me better results. Because if I had give myself permission to kind of play with the flow of the figure, then when I go back in and I do like serious, um, serious like shape design and things like that over the thrust of the figure that I made, um, I'll have like much more energy and vitality to work with. Also, one, another thing that you can run into that you want to be careful about is you don't want to be a slave to your gesture. The gesture is there to create a riff off of when you take it to another phase. Like the gesture is not is not a literal like placement of your lines or whatever. So what I what I did for that last drawing is I did a little like for part of it at the end there, I did a little bit of like what I would do for like the next phase of where I'd try to do more with the gesture drawing. And I might do that for a few more of these tonight. Part of the reason why I want to keep doing this is because we're going to be building off of like what we're doing here. Like, so like next Wednesday we're going to be doing more of this, although there will be kind of an anatomy stuff interlaced with what we're going to be doing with this on Wednesday a bit, I think. Because I want to try to fit some anatomy drills in. But uh, generally speaking, like we want to keep like rolling with the momentum on this, like, because this becomes like a foundational thing for driving other stuff we're gonna do. It'd be cool if we could get like a little bit of this in with in with driving the anatomy that we so, do. see.
So what I'm doing here is like I'm still I'm still doing gesture right now, but I'm kind of working out some stuff more. That's like phase two of my gesture, basically. I'm like, now I'm going to kind of recenter things a bit and get back to the Glen Bilpu technique now that I've had some fun. Remember, the point of these techniques is that they, you want to turn them into things that you use uh, functionally to, to like figure stuff out. Like, you, if, if you're stiffening up using the tool, um, trying to get the use of the tool uh, proper, then that's usually a warning sign that you're kind of going in about it with the wrong mentality. Like, these need to become tools that you can use freely. There are times to, like, repeat doing something and try to get it accurate and right and stuff. But, like, as far as, like, flowy gesture goes, like you're like you're you have full permission to be messy um but then like you can also reel it in with like a technique like vilpus for example like i have something to center myself back on uh if i find less if i find i start getting too loosey-goosey because he has like a basic foundational thing of like a head that gives me head tilt simple way to do the neck so I'm not getting caught up in neck anatomy or neck or like neck volumes or whatever simple way to do the torso that kind of helps capture the line of action flow plays off the plays off the, the neck then a really simple way of doing the um, legs and the feet I can still like plant the feet and stuff but they're like really really simple and I don't have to worry about like their complex complexities of the feet like the tilt of the pelvis versus the tilt of the arms i can invent with this technique and i'm actually going to start doing that a little bit right now i'm feeling i'm feeling like right now would be the time for me to start like inventing playing with this because i'm starting to get because i um i'm getting to the point doing these doing the time figure poses now where i feel like i'm starting to copy them for the sake of copying and now i want to start creating I'm still going to be looking at the poses here because, like, I can, even though I'm not doing that pose, uh, I can think about, like, how the shoulders work or how the hips work and stuff. And uh, that that gives me cues to play off of, even though I'm not drawing the pose now. I'm, in, I'm inventing, but I'm still, like, playing off what, of what I'm seeing a little bit. I'm thinking back to other other stuff we've drawn from other sessions. I'm just trying to like play with the figure a bit, play with my puppet, because you're going to be creating and inventing poses of your own, especially for animating. You need to have the capability to play with the poses. So I'm going to suggest that for if you're feeling comfortable for doing it, like keep looking at the figure, keep looking at the figure that's on screen. But try inventing some poses using the uh, technique that we've been practicing tonight. Try to try the dip poses at different angles and stuff. Try like con contrasting the uh, the positions of the limbs. Try like uh, getting some personality into a figure. Like, this is a technique you should be comfortable with playing with and inventing with. Because animators invent with it all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, it just occurred to me, since I did submit to Warner Brothers for a gig, maybe I should maybe I should start drawing some Warner Brothers characters for prep for just like general practice. They have some fantastic model sheets that they've made for several of their shows. So uh, for their more recent shows, like the Looney Tunes reboots and and the Animaniacs reboot and a bunch of other cool shit. Oh, also because it is Warner Brothers, that also means uh, you know that might be DC Comics um, superhero stuff. For all I know, be fucking rad. Can you imagine like if they made like a Batman animated series that kind of tried to capture the spirit of like the original. Uh, for modern time, for modern audiences, if they try to do something that kind of captures the spirit of what made, like, the original Batman anima animated series so good, that'd be fucking ra rad. Because remember, like, Bruce Timm's approach was, like, they were making the episodes into, like, miniature movies. So, like, they did a lot for the budget for the time. Like, the... The episodes were, were try. They tried to have the for the best episodes. It definitely feels like that. Like the episodes feel like they have the solidity of a really of like a miniature movie. And you can see the you can see the influence of like uh, Orson Welles movies and other things in it, in those in Frank Capra films and all the kinds of other cool stuff in um, in the those Batman those early Batman animated series episodes. It's cool because like it like it, it feels kind of like the, the original Batman animated series kind of feels a little bit like let's imagine if like the Fleischer Studios that were doing the Superman cartoons and stuff kept going with making lots more like superhero or more adult oriented ish stuff relatively speaking like detective uh, detective uh, animated animated films. Or whatever, like the Batman animated series, and in, in its spirit, kind of feels like an alternate reality, uh, where the Fleischer Studios with the Superman shorts kept going with making those kinds of things. Oh, and remember, uh, remember, of course, like. Um, the wonderful anime Big O, uh, amazing freaking anime, um, was made by animators who worked on Batman the Animated Series and were loved and were heavily influenced by Batman the Animated Series, and they just took the they took the ideas further and they meshed it with like Osama Tezuka and uh, Os Osama Tezuka influence and like uh, existentialism. <laughs> They, like, they, they took it to the logical conclusion that there's like there's new wave cinema influence in there. There's even more Orson Welles influence stuff in there. there and it, like it, it's crazy. It's crazy what they were able to do with like being being inspired by uh, their work on Batman the animated series. I'm just kind of nerding out now while I'm riffing on these. So like I'm feeling uh, good. I'm feeling good now. So I'm just, I'm just riffing and like inventing poses and stuff. Someone asked something. No, I was just saying that the Batman animation series uh, got me into art in the first place. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Yeah, that uh, the Batman animation series uh, got me into art. Oh yeah, I've got like the I've got the uh, Batman animated series art book too. It's a really fun book. I wonder if I should include my nerd out session in in, uh, <laughs> in my interview <laughs> with uh, with Warner Brothers. Say I love your shit. Well, no, they would. They would. <laughs> I mean. I think that I think they'd be cool with what they'd be like. Oh, that's cool! You do uh, you do, um, you could draw an animation classes on Twitch. That's that's awesome. That's like just like a resume bonus, basically. 
that the, the fact that I do this stuff. It's not going to make or break whether I get the gig. But whether I make or break, what makes or break whether I get the gig is if I have work that they think is is up to par with what they want to do with me, and uh, and if they have if I have the right attitude, uh, they, if they feel like I'm someone that they can work with. So, so you send, so did you send the resume to Warner Brothers? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they were, they were, they're looking for um, two D animators right now. I wish, I wish you the best of luck. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anyway, so you can see, like this, is, like now that I'm like warmed up from doing that stuff, like bits and pieces of stuff that's specific to me, like how I draw my characters and how I approach my characters are starting to come through here. Like, because I have enough of a foundation of reality to now um, start playing with invention and fantasy. So I'm kind of dropping off right now from doing the figure. It's like, I you kind of need to learn to sense like when the time is right for you to start inventing. Is the you want to run with whatever is going to give you the most value out of what you're doing? Like if um if I was like make if I was like working on a character, if I was like preparing for some animation or something and doing a session like this, this would be the time when I'd like draw where I'd have the character in mind, inventing poses for them, um, and drawing them on their volumes, uh, even though I'm or drawing them on their like their general kind of shorthand, because that's kind of a that will give me some cues to work with. Like I can reuse some of the poses later potentially for the character, or um, it would just at least give me it would at least let me explore the range of how much I can play with the figure and start to kind of get an intuitive sense of the character a little bit more. And also uh, another thing to note is like you'll often see, you will uh, you actually see like on the like especially like the Warner Brothers animated model sheets they tend to look really manicured and, and like really really clean. That's not the way you animate. Uh, let's take a look at the Warner Brothers model sheets after we get done here. But um, the recent ones, like the ones for the new stuff that they've been doing, like you're going to be reanimating like about this rough. Uh, if you're if you're doing a gig for them or something for your first pass on shit, that's just the re that's just the reality of stuff. Like, if, like, uh, because you need something like this where you can just concentrate on the forces at play to get the motion working before you start breaking down the uh, shapes and anatomy or the character design components. You need something simple that you can use. I sufficiently filled up that page with, with tons of bullshit. So, <laughs> but they're fun poses. That's the other thing, you want to cultivate your enjoyment when you're doing these, when you're doing these things. So if you have a, if you see an opportunity for a ses during a session like this to, to play like that. Okay, Google, stop. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes, and we're starting now. Then that's an opportunity to just run with it. And I feel pretty good about it, because, like, I'm warmed up. Like, I have a, I've have touched enough base with, like, this stuff to now feel confident that I can say something through my figures. And I mean, like... Let me show you an example. Like, uh, let's say I'm gonna. I've got. I, I know how Space Dad looks like. So, let's throw like a shorthand version of Space Dad in here.
This is still like in the realm of like the, the shorthand gesture right now. Like it's not the like the there's drawing problems that would need to be worked out and fixed and stuff. But like this is like the next phase of like getting it more like the character, basically. And so on. I mean, you can you can transform any of your. If you know a character that you have, if you have a character that you are pretty familiar with, like feel free to do this. Basically, like start drawing like some of the key. In this case of Space Dad, like it's pretty easy to just turn any of these drawings into Space Dad just by adding this. That maybe like the back of his hair or something. That's part of, like, the inherent, like, almost any character has, like, a shorthand that makes them recognizable. For me, it's this. Like, it's like the spaced out sort of do. Like, spaced out in a nutshell is, for how I have him currently, they're, like, He's a sort of a repository for trying out different character design techniques and stuff, so I can draw him in any style I want, really. But, like, Space Dad at his essence is basically just a pomp and a grin. Maybe a triangle nose. So I can have, like, a space potato. A little pipe. Space potato or space bean. I'm thinking like if I do more like more storyboard type stuff, I'll probably do like adventures of space dad type storyboard things where they can be just be bullshit silly fun stories that use my character because i like i know these characters inside and out by now so it would make sense to do storyboard demos using them and then it gives me an excuse to have fun and just play with the characterization uh and make the the streams where i do this stuff thematic and fun so that'd be a hell of a good idea i think uh here i'm gonna sign a date this let's see here one eleven twos and space. I don't have a fancy signature yet. I just you know, <laughs> when you sign stuff, you don't have to worry about a fancy signature. At least, at least like until you're making like illustrations where you want to have like a really kind of nicely little manicured signature for yourself or whatever. Like this. Just sign and date it so you can keep a diary of your work. Okay, Google, stop. Alright, so this will be our last session. Uh, actually, I'm going to take another two minutes real quick. I need to get a sip of water. Sorry. Stand. Okay, Google, stop. Um, but we'll take another two minutes. I'm going to grab some water and, and stuff. Um, we're going to do another 20 minutes. Um, I'm actually thinking like... One way I might want to structure these is like at the very... And I've done this before. Classes, is we take one of the poses that we did earlier in the class and we try to we like try to make a character out of it. Would you guys be down with doing that actually? For for the last thing we do tonight.
So you can, uh, I did like a bunch of invented poses, but like take a pose like that you've done that it feels like something you might want to rip off of to make a character drawing from. Or maybe do a few of them. Like you can do like the rough draw over things. Let's do that. Like for the remainder of our session, like take some of the previous drawings you've done. If you're working digitally, that's fine. Uh, if you're not, then like you can just do a new version of the same fig of the same pose, or just like take like a different pen or something and draw around it and stuff, and like um, add character elements to it or elaborate on it a bit. But let me see if I can give like a people a basic character puppet to use. Try something like this. So. Do this, and use the Ethan Becker wedge right here for the direction of the eyes. Actually, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Do this. Do this. Do this. We're gonna do a Disney thing. Do a sphere. Oh no no no! Sorry, <laughs> I'm a little being a little indecisive. I've actually got something else to pull from this. Yeah. Use this, basically. Like this uh, simplified risen norm approach with a head. And then for the rest of the figure, just, just do whatever. Just kind of elaborate on making it more like a figure. But basically, like for the head, you just start with like that. Get like a Use the um, use the center line or whatever you did previously. Get like a nose, basic nose in there. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Like you're just kind of touching base with these techniques. I'm doing a little side plane for the head there, and the jaw off there. So this, this is a cartoon head. So the jaw is bigger than the upper part of the head, and that's fine. But you're going to start playing with it. So things to look out for, like directional changes of the limbs, for example. Remember, this is like, these character drawings are basically like phase two of your gesture, so they're not going to be perfect. There's going to be a little bit of volume, a little bit of, a little bit of volume, a little bit of structure in them, but this is just like an opportunity to play some more. So instead of going back from our break, what time is it now? 7.40. All right, let's give it about, I want to say 18 minutes, or something like that, 18, 20 minutes. We'll just play with this for the remainder of time. Just kind of rip, just kind of draw over your original drawings, or just riff on them to like make characters and stuff. I just want to people give people an opportunity to play with stuff. And try to see if there's like an intuitive, like use some of the plooby newbie notes to play with, but like some of the stuff that's kind of on screen. But honestly, like you can play with, you can play with it however. Like this is an opportunity for you to kind of flex your cartoon, flex your like your ability to intuitively cartoon a little bit. In this case, I'm kind of thinking in terms of like masses of the figure. Like how can I how can I make these kind of putty like masses that I'm stretching and pulling? It's almost like taffy. I'm, that I'm stretching and pulling, sort of riffing off of the underlying forces of the gesture drawing that I've done previously. I'm trying to invent, like, personality and personality and character based on the stuff I'm playing with.
Going back to this, I can play with this some more. I think I'll make the head bigger. I'm not even concerned with what I have like a little bits and pieces in my head in mind of like what the original reference was, but I'm just going beyond the reference now. I've got a gesture drawing that I can riff off of, create a cartoon, and I can do whatever I want with it. This is not a very serious death scene that I'm making here. This is still like pretty humorous. Dude with this kind of goofy expression. Just kind of playing with whatever and rolling with it. If I wanted to make it serious somber death scene, I could go back to that. But I'm just kind of, I'm vibing with more of a humorous kind of western western animation approach right now. Five minutes, so let's say, okay, Google set timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes started. Yeah, folks, just keep, um, keep vibing with the stuff. I'm going to play this on screen if you guys want to keep drawing the figures. You can do that. But I'm going to be doing, like, what I, what I said that I'm going to set out to do, which is just, like, riffing on some of the figures that we drew. Because that's the point, like you're supposed to create characters and create poses for animation using this stuff. Stuff is useless if you're not putting it for some kind of purpose. It becomes a pointless exercise that, well, not really pointless, I mean you still get value out of doing it. But like you want to steer it towards whatever function you're, you're trying to accomplish. In my case, I'm an animator, so I'm going to be steering people towards uh, using these techniques for animation, storyboarding, probably comic art too. And like more dynamic ish illustration. Also, what's cool is like if you don't think you well, your figure went far enough when you got the initial gesture drawing, like you have enough to riff with usually to push it further, yet even make it even more dynamic than it was initially. So, yeah, like I said, uh, tomorrow. Um, 5.30 p.m. We'll be meeting up in the Discord. We'll be doing, not a, not a class, but we'll be doing another session like this. I'll, I'll have time poses. We'll, it'll be more, it'll be more discussion oriented. I want people to chatter and talk in the Discord voice chat when we're kind of doing stuff. Because I want people to talk about what their work is, what they're struggling with, and like... We can get to know each other better also. And so we can also like, so we can create this thing that I actually, that somebody actually described in Ethan's server, which is a psychological effect 
that occurs when you're in a group of people that are all working together or when you're in a group of people that are all being productive together you your productivity increases becomes it's like the they said it was like a, a, a doubling effect or something like that yeah but there's like some kind of ter psychological terminology for it where um basically like when you see other people that are being productive and you're around other people that are being productive it increases your pro your productivity and focus so let's meet up for that tomorrow basically I, um, that is the reason why I came that, that effect basically is the reason why I came to Ethan's server in the first place after all and creating that here would be fantastic let's do it let's meet up tomorrow about 5.30 and uh, we'll do maybe some stuff like this some more but we'll be going over like study material other study materials and we can work on personal projects. I'll probably have Astropug or myself play some time gesture poses for us to practice from. That'll be a good way to maintain momentum with these, with these sessions too. Yeah, you can see these are like gestural things that I can then take and make into like better defined characters and stuff. Like tomorrow, for example, I could take some I could take some of these drawings and work them out into like more thought out character designs or something. Or or at least character drawings or whatever. Hey, look, it's the Ethan Becker wedge. A little bit. It's not really one of the bigger drawings. Let's see here. Maybe I can use another page. Let's put that in there for now. So what can I riff off of? There's a lot to riff off on this one. Remind me tomorrow, I actually think I want to nerd out over Big O some more. And Batman the Animated Series some more. In fact, we're getting pretty close to the end. Well, when, when the timer, timer uh, counts, when the timer beeps, or whatever, when we get done here. Um... Let's take a look at some of the Warner Brothers model sheets that I was talking about. So maybe practicing some of the Warner Brothers characters tomorrow would be a good idea for me. I mean, certainly if I get an animation test, it would be nice to be on a similar page to the, uh, the character designs. the character designs in uh, Warner Brothers Productions. Great. 
floppy limbs here going on, but that's okay. I'm just playing with it. I'm not talking right now because I'm just kind of vibing. I'm starting to feel it. I can feel the cartooning energy flow through me a little bit. And I want to maybe maintain the momentum of that tomorrow. Like, again, I'm, I'm still, like, last week was warm-up week. I'm still getting warm-up this week. But now I'm starting to feel like we can really tap into stuff. And let's tap into more of stuff tomorrow, for sure. Uh, okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus three minutes and 43 seconds. Cool. I'm pretty satisfied with what I did, so I'm going to leave it there. You guys can keep using the timer if you like. I, fuck it, I'll just cancel the timer. Okay, Google, stop timer. Okay, cancel. Let's see if we can find some of the new Bugs Bunny model sheets or some other stuff. Here's one of the new Daffy model sheets, I think. Or no, wait. No, it's an old school one. That's not one of the new ones. I think this is... Is that fan art or is that a new model sheet? Hmm. It does look great, though. I think that was some of the character design stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Looney Tunes reboot. Reboot model sheets. There we go. Here's one of them. Uh, this one is not one of the ones that really shows off. How you're supposed to draw the character, though. There's some really, really descriptive ones that are pretty fantastic. Let's see if we can find them. Here's one. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> Bugs can be broken into three basic shapes. Eggs, egg, bullet, ball. Yeah, see that? And uh, there's the volumetric construction right there. 
five and a half heads tall. They have specific rules for how he's drawn and how he's on model. And look at that, they, they show you like you can draw like this really simple shorthand right here for constructing the feet, for example, look like that. Can construction, like you start out with animating like, like these, 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 this figure right here, that's basically like the, <laughs> you wouldn't even draw like, like that for, you draw closer to how we were drawing for tonight for your rough animation. Uh, but you'd probably like want to use this to like break down the construction of bugs when you're doing tie downs and clean up. Um, yeah. You see, like the way that he, the way that the character that the character's kind of rubber bandy body shapes and stuff is kind of played with the same sort of way that I was playing with with like my stuff a little bit, with the kind of bendy taffy sort of effect. I'm nude. Uh, yeah. I think whoever whoever made this was probably taking a little a little bit too much glee with with drawing a nude Elmer Fudd. Let's see, but there's like a lot of us. Oh, here's another one. There's several sheets like this. Um, here's another one. Bugs posing. Oh, this is this is one of the high quality. There actually was a bunch of high quality uploads, and I think this is one of them. Of uh, of the Bugs Bunny model sheet. Look at this. That's great. Look at that. There's a shorthand right. There's some shorthand posing of him. Yeah, that's what that's what they're talking about when they say like character shorthand. Very, and you can like take these very simple approaches for the uh, for the character. Avoid evenness and proportions. Yeah, he should have like Bugs has a long torso and short legs, and the trick pose don't switch the two. Always taper limbs. When constructing ears, think of straight versus curve. Avoid stiff ears that look like TV antennas. Pay attention to flow. Use the profile line. Look at that. So that's like there's there's like kind of like flow and bendiness that happens to like Bugs when he goes like in the different poses, like in his head, for example. He comes more like kind of a pointed forward bullet. So before versus like this, when it's more squished like that back there. Looking at this, like this kind of makes me think like there's there's some rules here that I might want to like play with for my own characters a little bit more. So here's like more solid construction stuff, like for more serious cleanup phase ish things for constructing bugs bugs his head, which is like the more gestural posing right here. See here. But yeah, there's a lot of model sheets like these. There was a but there's a whole bunch of them that people uploaded, um, like officially, basically, like a bunch of like model sheets that uh, they gave permission. That Warner Bros. gave permission for the animators to to like upload online. Let's actually try to see if they have the Animaniacs, Maniacs model sheets. We might strike some gold there with the new reboot. The, the original model sheets are still great to look at because look at these lovely gestural figures and stuff. Personally, I think that I think I would get a lot out of just looking at these, um, and not even necessarily looking at the um, the new reboot model sheets because like the the core of what makes these characters appealing and stuff and expressive is like right in there. Like these are these are poses that hold up today easily. Uh, but here's the reboot. Uh, yeah, the characters look more like kind of stylized and stuff, but the core of what makes them them is still present here. This is more kind of Disney-esque, I would say, and this one has like kind of like the um, more abstract design elements to it. That kind of look like a, a, like a late stage Chuck Jones callback a little bit more, I would say. Expression sheets. Yeah, there's, there's probably a lot more I can take into that. But yeah, I, I think like finding these um, is a good 
off. It's like, look at this. Like, this is basically this is essentially like you're seeing right here, like what we were doing tonight, but applied to cartooning. Like the really kind of simple shorthand. <laughs> Here's a more construction model y kind of thing versus like. Remember when you're thumbnailing out your poses or just really, really roughing out your poses, they can be really super, super loose and they don't have to be like perfect manicured things because you're playing with the energy of them and you let the energy guide the performance and the posture of the, of the character and so on. Doesn't mean you're sloppy, but you let that guide the, uh, the vitality of it. There we go. Some some of the original new comparisons. That's cool. Look at that. More simplified kind of rounded, um, simplified shapes. Yeah, goonier expression on uh, goonier eyes in general. There's like very kind of like uh, brush pen stylized shaped language going on here. Let's say in the new. That's neat. <laughs> there's there's one of the mo there's an excerpt from one of the model sheets it looks like brow never cross eyes never cross some rules like rules established on how on like how the character's eyes work hmm. It's a 1993 Animaniacs uh, press kit with a bunch of model sheets in it. Model sheet character stuff. That's cool. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Oh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Batman, Batman animated series model sheets. There we go, there's the original. It was Japan and Korea that they did outsource those two. And they had yeah, they had their own system they had their own system for that, how they handled different aspects of Batman's design and the other characters. Head, like Batman's head theory for how his head works for that's stylized for different angles. Oh yeah, like some of the rough posing. Yeah, but like this is the kind of stuff that like animator, uh, like, like literally what we were doing tonight. This is, this we were basically doing this, and this is what you would do with a character. Like this is not a perfectly drawn Batman. This is like kind of like in the ballpark of what his proportions and volumes are like, but it's kind of just loosening up with him. To kind of get like the general thrust and the feel of him. To play with the dy to give you permission for the to play with the dynamics of the character before you do like more serious tied down stuff that looks more like kind of the manicured stylized stuff that goes into the final models of the show, like this. Showing off the rules of this. The cleanup artists have to design something that's like more solid like this based on those uh, those rougher drawings basically. And let's see, big O sheets. Big O's character designs, of course. Big O. You can find a bunch of the model sheets from Big O on a, on a few sites that have them. 
Oh, wow. I, I think this might be someone who worked on the show previously, like, showing off a bunch of model sheet stuff that they have. Yeah, it's really fucking rad when, like, uh, I, I just, I'm absolutely jazzed that these people nerded out over the cool shit that was happening, the cool core shit that was happening in Batman the Animated Series, and that inspired them to to riff off of, like, Tezuka and, like, Go Nagai and a bunch of other cool shit to create their own cool past story. I think it was a fantastic anime too. It's uh, it's rare that something is like almost perfect, and the uh, story and everything about this about this series is fantastic. Anyway, so uh, thank you all for coming. I will see you guys tomorrow in uh, in in the Discord 5:30 p.m. I'll also see you on my Twitch class stream. Uh, at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, well, we'll be doing more of this, but we'll also be trying to see if we can integrate some anatomy into it. We're going to be trying to get momentum going here. Like, we're, we're trying to get familiar with the figure and, tra and translating them, them into usable puppets that then we can get, then use for our storyboarding and our, and our animation and our character design and stuff. And we're going to be c continuing momentum with that. Like, the core of what we're doing is the, fi is the figure that we're going to be turning into characters and animation and other things. So, thank you all for coming. Congratulations! 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 Congratulations!